The dialogue element is a new HTML element with superpowers supported across all major browsers and it helps you create modal and non-modal dialogues. In this video, we'll take a look at the challenges that this element solves, modal versus non-modal dialogue, the top layer and more. Let's take a look. A non-modal dialogue is a dialogue that appears and allows the user to continue interacting with other parts of the user interface. On the other hand, a modal dialogue is a dialogue that requires immediate attention from the user and prevents them from interacting with the rest of the user interface until the dialogue is dealt with. This should not be used very often as it could disrupt the user's flow. However, it does have legitimate use cases. For example, asking for confirmation, asking for some user details before you go to the next step. You might be wondering, why do we need a new HTML element for dialogues? I can create a dialogue element with a div element and some JavaScript. The problem with that is that it's really hard to get it right. You have to worry about several aspects. Let's take a look. For example, a modal dialogue should have a focus trap. It should trap the focus within the dialogue. Here's an example where I open a modal dialogue that is not implemented correctly. When I press tab, you see I focus into the input and then into the button in the dialogue. But if I press tab again, I'm going all the way to the user's navigation. Imagine how many users are gonna get stuck and have to tab all the way to get back into the dialogue and it's also super confusing. Something else we have to take care of is handling the escape button. This is essential for keyboard navigation. If you press escape, the dialogue should close. And the third thing is a div is not necessarily a dialogue. So you have to manage that with ARIA attributes and you have to sync that whether the dialogue is open, is closed, and that's to be honest, quite complicated. Moreover, and this one is really impossible sometimes, is that if your dialogue was nested within many stacking contexts, so let's say you have an element with position fixed and then inside of it you have transforms and maybe opacity. If you have a modal dialogue and you wanna open it inside all of these stacking contexts, it's gonna be impossible to get it outside of that stacking context. Even if you give it a Z index of 214748364 Check this video if you've never seen that number before. At the moment of recording, the dialogue element works on all major browsers. It is a normal HTML element. Let's see how we can use it. And I'm gonna start focusing on the non-modal dialogue. So the dialogues that you can continue interacting with the rest of the page. The dialogue element is hidden by default. So all the content that goes into the dialogue are hidden. This can be verified by looking at the DevTools. The user agent style sheet show that the dialogue is hidden by default. Now, if I add the open attribute to the dialogue, you also see from the user agent style sheet that it's now gonna be visible. You can programmatically add this attribute when the user, for example, clicks on a button or when a certain action occurs. And this is how you have a non-modal dialogue that opens when the user clicks on a button. Alternatively, you can select the dialogue and use the show method. The show method will show the dialogue. This will work by adding the open attribute. You can programmatically close the dialogue element by removing the open attribute or by calling the close method on the dialogue. You also have cancel and close events. Now, what's really cool is that you can have a form close a dialogue without any JavaScript. If you set a forms method to dialogue, then it will close the nearest ancestor dialogue. Then it's gonna go up in the DOM, find the nearest dialogue and then close it. What's also cool is that after it's closed, you can access the return value property on that dialogue and that value will contain the button's value. So if you have multiple buttons with different values, you can know which button the user has clicked. That's really cool. Now we'll talk about the model use cases and this is where it gets more exciting. So we start by defining the dialogue in the HTML the same way as we did before. But instead of opening it with the show method, we have to open it with the show model method and there is no equivalent attribute for it. So you cannot use the open attribute or, or any other attribute to use the model mode of the dialogue. At first, this looks a little bit similar with a slight visual difference with the backdrop. We'll come back to this in a second. You have all the benefits that you have from before. You can close it with the close method or with the form and you can access the return value and all of that. But on top of that, you have native or automatic focus trap from the browser. Take a look, I'm gonna press tab. I didn't add any extra code and the focus is trapped within this dialogue. It never leaves it. So if you have two elements that are focusable, the focus will just keep on cycling between these two elements. 
That's amazing. If you've worked with dialogues before, we had to import massive libraries, maybe 40 kilobytes of JavaScript, just to handle the focus trap into the dialog. You can also close Moldo dialogues with the escape button. Here's what happens when you press on the escape button. Now let's inspect this dialog element and you see it has a backdrop. And this backdrop here is a pseudo element that you can customize. I can change the opacity, I can change the background color, and this is a visual indicator to the user that the rest of the UI is inaccessible until you deal with the model. Now, if you don't really understand why a div is not okay, why is focus trap important, I can just use my mouse, then maybe you haven't worked a lot with accessibility. And in that case, I recommend you check my course, learnhmlcss.online. You will interactively learn about the importance of accessibility and semantics and many other things of modern HTML and CSS. So there you can also learn Flexbox and Grid. It's also linked in the description below. Now, in my opinion, the coolest feature you have in Moda Dialogs is that they open in the top layer. So they open in the browser's top layer. That means they can escape any stacking context. So if you go back to the challenges where I told you you might have a position fix and then a transform and then an opacity, and from deep within all of these stacking contexts, you try to open a modal dialog. It's not a problem. It's going to show on top of all of your UI and you do not have to give it the index of 10 even. It's super cool. Let's take a look. But keep in mind, this is only happening for modal dialogs. Only modal dialogs get promoted to the top layer. The top layer is not this foreign concept. You can actually visualize it and inspect it in DevTools. You can see the dialog here is open in the top layer, which is at the end of the page. This top layer is a layer that is on top of all of your website. So the highest C index, the topmost stacking context, they are all below it. And the top layer comes on top. That's why it's called the top layer. At the moment of recording, model dialogs are promoted to the top layer. If you use the JavaScript full screen API, the element that you use will be also promoted to the top layer. And there's also the popover attribute, which recently made it to Safari and Chrome. At the moment, it's probably way too early to use it, but if you're watching this in six months, you probably can use it. So check the browser support. So any element that is rendered on the top layer will just appear on top of everything. And that's it. And that can often save so much trouble with having to deal with the index, the order of the DOM, stacking context. So I should probably make a video about stacking context at some point. And if you're wondering if you have more than one element in the top layer, the one that gets added later is the one that's going to show on top of the other one. But hopefully you don't have to go there. So play around with this new HTML element. It's really cool. If you want to dive deeper into the dialog and see how you can use it to build more complex dialogs for your UI, then I recommend you check Adam's article on web.dev. It's going to be linked below. And check out my courses below for JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and more. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.